Zimbabwe's National Development Strategy 1, NDS 1, regards energy as a key enabler in the acceleration of the country's modernization and industrialization agenda, as well as sustainable socioeconomic growth. In terms of NDS 1, providing access to reliable and low-cost energy is in line with the government's intention to drive economic growth and stability. This also means leaving no person and no place behind, as His Excellency the President always says. Adopting renewable energy is crucial in Zimbabwe's fight against the impact of climate change over and above the attendant economic benefits. Hello and welcome to Economic Forum, a program where we discuss various issues affecting our economy in Zimbabwe. My name is John Masubu and already alluded is the issue of energy and today we're going to be talking energy especially renewable energy which is the in thing nowadays and to discuss that i've got a renewable energy expert that is mr isaiah Nekusenwa. welcome to economic forum thank you very much for having me on yes. the program it's very interesting because you know historically we've been used to generating energy in different forms but just to bring us into context, why are we singing a lot about renewable energy when we've coal, when we've got our firewood and other uh, fossil fuels that we can use? Okay, I think what we have, uh, what we have now experienced uh, from a world perspective is the, the warming up of temperatures which have been caused up by emissions. So there is a general agreement that countries have come up with to reduce their emissions. And uh, in particular, Zimbabwe has set a target of 40% to reduce uh, its emissions by. Uh, and uh, part of the, pro, you know, the, the means to do that is to actually also reduce emissions from our power generation uh, and also you know, from, from transport sector. So it's across the board that we need to look at so that at least we can also avert the disaster that is looming in as as climate change is concerned. While we are advocating for the you know, bigger or larger use of renewable energy, are we uh, also uh, wanting to get rid of uh, these traditional methods? Not, not really, you know, uh, like a, a, a sudden stop to. You, you have to go through a process where there's just transition if we are to move away from coal. But we must also bear in mind that coal provides our best load um, and, and therefore the other sources of energy come in as well to, to kick in to, 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 to support that. But uh, we can also decarbonize you know, our coal and make it more efficient and so that we don't have much emissions. Or we can also increase the other sources of uh, renewables uh, that 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 is from solar, wind, hydro, you know, bioenergy, and um, geothermal. If we are able to harness it, yeah. well, it's good that you've uh, you know spelled out some uh, of uh, the renewable energy sources that I was going to ask you about. But what are the advantages and disadvantages? Because one might think that if I've got solar power, I'm 100% okay. So uh, what precautionary measures have you got to take, even if you've got the renewable energy sources? The, the issue there is that uh, solar, for example, that you have highlighted, you can only generate it during the day. And therefore, you need to store it. So you might need to adopt again the issue of batteries. Or you can have another source. Uh, normally, when we talk about energy sources, we talk about a mixture of, of energy sources. Uh, so for Zimbabwe, our energy mix is you've got coal, you've got hydro. Now you've got also you know, independent power producers producing also solar um, coming in as well. And, and what we are basically saying is, you know, you've got to look at your peak demand. You've got to look at uh, when you don't need that much power as well. So that whole mix, you know, come, comes into being. So if you look at it from an individual perspective, um, we talk about, you know, an energy uh, solution. Uh, for example, say if you want to put solar at your home, 
you integrate it with the grid, you integrate it with the battery, you integrate it with, you know, uh, you take away some of the units that generate or that consumes a lot of power, like geysers and, and things like that. You put solar thermal and things like that. Yes, as I uh, we have lots of uh, sunshine. Yes. Uh, is there no threat to sunshine? Just like we see with climate change, are we happy to use as much solar as we can? You know, without uh, any fears that we might lose the sun. No, <laughs> we will not lose the sun. Uh, it's in abundance. Zimbabwe is in a region where we've got you know uh, highest you know solar radiation. Um, and and it's available in this abundance. What has happened is that in the past years we have seen a reduction in the costs uh, of solar panels. We have seen the, the reduction in the cost of uh, uh, of batteries as well. So this is why you are now seeing a lot of you know uh, move that is now taking place towards uh, solar generation. Um, you, you can actually substitute, uh, like say for example, if you put in, in an industrial complex and you use solar during the day, whatever then you are giving to that industry goes to another source, right? Uh, so you are able then to spread the electricity to other areas. That's Isaiah Nyakusendwa. He's our guest today and we are discussing renewable energy. You know, the energy uh, that is smart, uh, that uh, uh, is unlike the fossil fuels that we've been using in the past, which are now uh, affecting our climate and uh, the major source of the issues to do with climate change that we're talking about. So join us in the second segment of Economic Forum. There are various uses of energy that we would want now uh, to talk about here uh, in the second segment of Economic Forum, where our guest is Isaiah Nyakusenwa, who is a renewable energy expert. Let's have a, a broad look at the uses of energy and the impact thereof, so that we have that fully understanding and how we can then uh, transition or migrate uh, into uh, renewable energy. Okay, um, the, the main uses for, 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 for energy, you find that you will use electricity for lighting, for heating, for, for, for productive use. Um, yeah, so those, and, and also for production, right? So depending on which area we are talking about, if we're talking about urban, um, the uses then expand to also transport, you know, uh, we, we're talking about also the transportation system, whether passenger or, you know, commercial, uh, where we also use, you know, um, energy there as well. Um, so in the, in the rural areas, they have also their own uses, right? So maybe let me dwell on the rural areas, right? We've got about 63% of our people who live there and their main source of heating, they use wood, right? Uh, we, we got to look at uh, renewable energy there to substitute the use of wood. Uh, and uh, here we are talking of biogases, right? Uh, and we have also transitioned from the old biogases to to, to the newer biogases, which are prefabricated units, and they're easy to roll out and they're also cheaper. Um, so that we can reduce also the emissions, deforestation, and, and that, those that give impact to climate change. Of course, the issue of lighting, uh, we know the grid uh, might not be economic to go through to the rural areas, you know. Um, so we're now talking of uh, solar home systems that can also be applied. These are now decentralized renewable energy solutions, which then are, can be also be implemented at household level, where the household can generate their own power. Then there's the productive use side, 
where we are then saying they can also use solar pumps for the irrigation. They can use, you know, DC refrigerators for their cooling. Um, they can also use even solar millers for the milling, you know, and we substitute diesel uh, or petrol uh, generators. Yeah. Yes. You, you have dwelt at length with the rural areas comparatively with the urban areas. Is there any uh, specific point that relates to mining since it's growing uh, nowadays? Yes, um, mining, there is a lot that can be done in our mining industry. Um, not only mining, but also industrial. Um, we're also encouraging the miners also to embrace renewable energy. Uh, we have lots of miners who are now putting up solar plants at their own you know, uh, mining houses. Um, and also substituting the, the boilers which were being fired through coal, you know, uh, we're also looking at those kind of things. But generally, I think what precedes all these renewable energy is energy efficiency, where we need to start looking at those energy efficient, uh, you know, uh, or the way energy has been used in those uh, productive areas. Yeah, and mining can, can draw, can actually yeah, play a very significant role. At times, uh, you know, it takes quite long for people to understand the effects of climate change. As you said, that the majority of our people live in the rural areas and they're using firewood and to stop them from what they've been using over many generations may not be easy. Even mm -hmm. some uh, who are in peri-urban or in urban areas. So are these effects now uh, being known and being aware of to the extent that people are now, you know, abiding by some of the, you know, rules and regulations as well as the tips uh, you give in order uh, to conserve energy or to use smart energy? I think it's an ongoing process. Uh, we have all the stakeholders. They have a big role to play, uh, you know, government on one hand, private sector, and also the general public to disseminate these, these challenges that we have. Um, I, must, I must say that, you know, whilst we talk about the rural areas, one of the biggest contributing areas where we get lots of emissions is actually the tra transport sector. We also need to start moving towards electric vehicles uh, in as far as our transport system is concerned, uh, whether from a passenger point of view uh, or to a mass transport point of view. That's Isaiah Nyakusendwa, who is our guest today. He is a renewable energy expert and we are discussing various ways of using renewable energy and also looking at what we have been using and how we can reduce, especially in order to arrest climate change. So join us in the third and final segment of Economic Forum. It is very important for everyone to embrace renewable energy. And today we are discussing renewable energy, how it can be sustained, how it can grow, and also how we can reduce the use of fossil fuels. And we have an expert here who is Isaiah Nyakusendwa, he is a renewable energy expert. How can you persuade all of us, uh, Isaiah, to go the renewable energy way? Okay. I think we need to look at the facts in as far as Zimbabwe is concerned. Uh, I think we talked about where we get most of our energy sources from. Um, and we have gone through the load shedding, right? Uh, we have power deficits. Um, currently, sometimes we load shed 300, 400 megawatts uh, because the water levels, say, from our main source being Kariba has gone down. Um, and, and, and the issue of climate change becomes real, you know, because those water levels, it's probably unprecedented to where we are right now. And so our power generation then reduces. Now, for us to fit in that gap, we end up having to import power. Now, importing power requires foreign currency. 
But if you put up a plant, you use foreign currency to, to put to buy the equipment, but you've got the sanction to generate power for years to come, you know. Uh, and those plants can go 20, 25 years. Um, so we are saying because of the reduction in costs for some of these renewable energy sources, it's now easy to implement some of those projects. And therefore, we need them to embrace the need of power generation. Now, if you think 300, 400 megawatts is, 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 is okay and can be taken care of, if we look at the growth of this economy, right? Right now, the country, the economy is growing, right? We have seen the miners coming in. You have Manise steel power plant, which alone requires, you know, in excess of 500 megawatts uh, on its own. So that's power that needs to be generated. So if you talk about a 15 billion mining economy, it needs power, right? And so that gap, the projections that have been done is that we will end up with a deficit of 3,000 megawatts, okay, 3 gigawatts uh, of a deficit. So that deficit needs to be filled in from other sources. And hence we are saying, let's embrace and take on renewables to fill in that gap. Yes. Moving from there, Isaiah, let's now look at financing. You know, in order for us to achieve uh, all these, in order for each household uh, to be able to get solar power and uh, all the requirements that are, are needed, all those things have to be financed. And we've noticed that some of the uh, products are now getting lower with regards to price. But uh, how are we financing, you know, uh, renewable energy so that at the end of the day we are quite adequately saved? Right. I think that's a big area that you have just highlighted, which needs to be tackled from, from various angles. If we look at it from a government perspective, we need also to look at the enabling policies to promote the uptake. I'll give you an example. You know, if we have duty waivers or VAT waivers on some of these products, it can, re it can encourage the uptake, right? If you go to the, 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 the local banks, it also needs to be attractive for them to be able to invest in, in, in these projects. We have seen of late domestic financing coming into the space uh, for some solar plants which have been financed through uh, pres prescribed asset status, uh, which has encouraged the pension funds to put and invest money. Because the solar plant is not any different from, you know, um, the, the, the properties that these uh, pension funds are investing in. And we are investing also into our future uh, energy security, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the, the, the issue is we need a combination of funding. Most of the equipment that we use uh, for these renewables is imported. So you need also, you know, foreign currency as well. To come into play as well into that sector. I think if we adopt a holistic approach to it, right, we'll find solutions. Let's also not forget end user financing, and this touches really on the rural populace, their ability to also afford some of these products uh, so that at least they can also, you know, find solutions for themselves. While explaining that, how does innovation that is taking place at our various tertiary institutions going to help, especially in reducing our usage of foreign currency, where some of the things can actually be manufactured here. Right. I think the tertiary institutions will kick in, right, uh, with innovations, but what's key and fundamental is research and development budgets to enable those tertiary institutions to innovate and also to research and then develop products that can that are competitive, uh, so that at least you know we can also come up with core advantages that are unique to the country. Now, if we take for example, um, we have got uh, products like lithium iron, or rather lithium. Uh, we have abundance of that uh, in the country, and the government has taken a position 
not to export the lithium ore uh, undeveloped. It's uploaded. Uh, we need to take a step further, right? And and look at how we can also aggregate, you know, that mineral to be able to uh, make good of use, good, good use of it. And we also need to look at the market side, right, to ensure that whatever we innovate on is taken up competitively, uh, you know, competing, you know, uh, against other countries. I think a regional approach is another way to look at it as well. So, yes, tertiary institutions have a role to play, uh, financiers have a role to play, government has a role to play, private sector has a role to play. Yes. Let's look at the private sector, the corporates. I think we've dwelt uh, at mu uh, much about government's involvement, what they can do, how can they, they can ease you know, some of the ways of doing business uh, and as well as the innovations. Mm -hmm. How about the corporates? Uh, where do they come in? The, the, the corporates come in because they consume you know, uh, most of the power. They, 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 they need to make sure that the, the, the power supply units are sustainable, right? Uh, load shedding costs uh, this economy lots of money. I think it's some area that has not been talked about as to the cost, but it's an area that the private sector can also chip in and generate their own power and then be able then to lessen the load that then is taken up uh, through the country. Well, Isaiah, I would like to thank you very much. That's Isaiah Nyakusendwa, who is a renewable energy expert, and we we're talking about how we can harness, you know, renewable energy so that we use it in much more than the fossil fuels that we're using at the moment. If you would like to get in touch with us, you can do so on the numbers that are showing on your screen. If you'd like to engage with us and also bring up some of the issues that Aizanya Kusendwaye he was uh, talking about, you can do that on our social media platforms that again are showing on your screens. If you happen to miss some of the episodes of Economic Forum, you can watch them on our YouTube channel, which is Economic Forum Zimbabwe. On behalf of our guest, Aizanya Kusendwa, and the production crew, this is John Masugu wishing you happy viewing.